to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. Uh, yes, this is going to be the new intro I do whenever I cover a sign of the times. So I just like to keep things fresh. I want to mix it up. I, I have a custom um, intro for whenever I talk about Islamic or um, Arab things. Uh, I want to do another one for whenever I do videos on Judaism. So I just I like to keep things fresh. Um, I'm still going to use the other intro for the probably the vast majority of my videos but this one's going to be for whenever i cover signs of the times and i have a new entry on my timeline um i actually came across this i woke up i was going through flipboard which is an app uh, where it covers all these different news stories and uh interestingly enough after i got out of bed i got an email from angela bell uh pointing this out to me extreme rogue wave in north pacific confirmed as most extreme on record okay so um i put it on my timeline i i feel like anytime there's the largest of something a record breaking something that it's probably significant and as we record them and uh look at them all together and see the big picture we can see the big picture that things are getting more and more extreme as time goes on. Interestingly, uh, let me zoom in here. Interestingly, this happened on the 17th of November, 2020. <laughs> so many 17s. Um, so anyway, this happened uh, obviously during a very turbulent year. Uh, a lot of things were going on that year. Uh, we had the George Floyd protests. We had... Um, this you remember this right here uh a lightning oh lightning world record the greatest duration for a single lightning flash uh in how long was it 17 seconds <laughs> 17 seconds and then a few months before that a mega flash record uh that's basically lightning within a cloud and it was the longest one ever recorded imagine lightning Tra go, uh, in the sky going for 477 miles yeah that's a mega flash and that happened in 2020 uh there were a lot of things that happened in 2020 a lot of very interesting things we had a comet that was visible to the naked eye comet neowise and we have another one coming up later this month in early february i'm taking note of comets uh, specifically ones that are going to be visible to the naked eye because I feel like signs are meant for observers. And so if it's like a comet that you can't see and it's just kind of obscure, what a, it's not maybe really a sign unless like something interesting is happening with it. So the last one that we had was in 2020. Now we have one coming up pretty soon. So there's a whole host of things. We had that very special uh, general Conference, April 2020. This is the year of the pandemic. This is when the missionaries were called home. This is when the temples were closed. Um, during the first part of the year, the star Betelgeuse, which is part of Orion, it's one of his shoulders, uh, was dimmed. Oh, well, it was already, it started before that, but it was dimmed in the first part of the year. Just a lot of stuff. So uh, add another one to the list. Okay, September, or sorry, uh, November 17th, 2020, the most extreme rogue wave ever recorded off the coast of, I think this is pronounced, Yuklu. Uh, <laughs> I even practiced it before this video. Yukliet, Yukliet, whatever, British Columbia. Um, let's take a look at the article that this comes from that Angela, Angela Bell shared. And thank you, Angela, for sending this in. This is on Science Alert. Okay. It says, in November 2020, a freak wave. <laughs> I like that. Uh, came out of the blue, leaving a lonesome buoy off the coast of British Columbia. 17 meters high. Oh my gosh, I didn't even catch that. Uh, which is 58 feet. The four-story wall of water was finally confirmed in February 2022 as the most extreme rogue wave ever recorded. 
such an exceptional event is thought to occur only once every 1300 years. You know what? I better put that down. Um, thought to occur only once every <clears throat> every 1300 years. Yeah, I'll put that. <laughs> Jeez Louise. And we have this mega drought in the West uh, that hasn't happened in 1200 years. And there's so many things that haven't happened in hundreds and then sometimes thousands of years. Uh, this is another one. And unless the buoy had been taken for a ride, we might have never known it even happened. Okay. Scientists define a rogue wave as any wave more than twice the height of the waves surrounding it. The Dropner wave, for instance, was 25.6 meters tall, with its neighbors, while its neighbors were only 12 meters tall. Okay. Here's a quote. <clears throat> this is from um, physicist Johannes Gemrich from the University of Victoria, 2022. Quote, proportionally, the Euclid wave is likely the most extreme rogue wave ever recorded. Only a few rogue waves in high sea states have been observed directly and nothing of this magnitude. End quote. Today, researchers are still trying to figure out how rogue waves are formed so we can better predict when they will arise. So they don't know what causes this, um, but they do say later on, unfortunately, a 2020 study predicted wave heights in the northern Pacific are going to increase with climate change, which suggests that Euclid wave, I'm just going to say Euclid, that's easier. I know it's wrong, but uh, may not hold its record for as long as our current prediction suggests. And then at the very end of the article, quote, capturing this once in a millennium wave right in our backyard is a thrilling indicator of the power of coastal intelligence to transform marine safety, end quote. All right, so where is uh, a clue it? It's right here. It's actually, uh, it's relatively close to Washington State and um, Seattle. Here's Vancouver, right? And uh, here's Vancouver Island. So basically somewhere off the the west coast of Vancouver Island out here somewhere. Okay. That's where it occurred. That's where it occurred. Now, this got me to thinking about a topic I think we've just lightly covered in the past uh, in DNC 61. Some of you probably already know what this is as soon as I say it's DNC 61. Let's read the um, heading. <clears throat> Revelation given through Joseph Smith, the prophet on the banks or on the bank of the Missouri River. McGillowayne's Bend, August 12th, 1831. So the church was just one year old. This was the same year that New Jerusalem was identified or the center place for New Jerusalem was identified in Jackson County. Missouri. On the return trip to Kirtland, the prophet and ten elders had traveled down the Missouri River in canoes. On the third day of the journey, many dangers were experienced. Elder William W. Phelps, in a daylight vision, saw the destroyer riding in upon the face of the waters. Okay, so now you might know what we're talking about. The destroyer upon the water is a very peculiar portion of the the scriptures in my mind. Okay, verse 14. Behold, I the Lord in the beginning blessed the waters, but in the last days by the mouth of my servant John, I cursed the waters. So the footnote for cursed takes you to the book of Revelation, chapter 8, verses 8 through 11. We'll see what that says. Um, <clears throat> and the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. All right. And then, you know, it talks about wormwood, which is a wormwood is a bitter herb. It's um, symbolic. And, and yes, I know about Chernobyl. Chernobyl uh, means wormwood. That's where you had that nuclear power plant that 
had a meltdown in Ukraine of all places. But anyway, um, so in DNC, it's taught, it's making reference to the book of revelation when John, uh, had that revelation about the waters. Okay. Continuing. Wherefore the days will come that no flesh shall be safe upon the waters. And it, shall, and it shall be said in the days to come that none is able to go up to the land of Zion upon the waters, but he that is upright in heart. And as I, the Lord, in the beginning cursed the land, even so in the last days have I blessed it in its time for the use of my saints, that they may partake uh, the fatness thereof. And now I give unto you a commandment that what I say unto one, I say unto all, that if you if you shall forewarn your brethren concerning these waters, that they come not in journeying journeying upon them, lest their faith fail and they are caught in snares. Verse nineteen, uh, I the Lord have decreed that the destroyer rideth upon the face thereof. I revoke not the decree. It's interesting because I, I guess I never realized um, until now that this is directly connected to the Book of Revelation. And the sounding of the trumpets and the angels. Uh, <clears throat> I, the Lord, was angry with you yesterday, but today mine anger is turned away. Wherefore, let those concerning whom I have spoken that should take their journey in haste. Again, I say unto you, let them take their journey in haste. And it mattereth not unto me after a little, if it so be that they fill their mission, whether they go by water or, or by land, let this be as it is made known unto them according to their judgments hereafter. Okay, so what what does this all mean? What does it all mean? Because I know that there's some pretty wild ideas about this, a lot of different interpretations. Well, I went to uh, Bruce R. McConkie. Okay. Uh, let me zoom in. Okay, this is in Mormon Doctrine, under Destroyer. See Abaddon, Apollyon, Destruction of the Soul, Devil. Uh, you, you may recognize Abaddon, Apollyon. Those are names that show up in the Book of Revelation. Um, and specifically Apollyon, I think that's the name associated with the Bottomless Pit. We've already done a video about the Bottomless Pit. Okay, this, <clears throat> this name for Satan signifies that this great labor... Uh, sorry, that his great labor is to destroy the souls of men. Incident thereto, he rejoices in bringing to pass temporal, spiritual, and mental ruin and waste of all degrees. Interesting that he brings up mental ruin because we were just talking about mental illness and how um, in a recent conference there was a general authority that said that he was wondering if maybe the the scourge, you know, the desolating scourge might have to do with mental illness being on the rise. Uh, William W. Phillips in Daylight Vision saw the destroyer riding in power upon the face of the Missouri River, and thereupon the Lord revealed to the prophet the perils to be wrought upon the waters in the last days by the destroyer. And there was another part where he talks about this. Um, disasters and calamities abound. Perils and calamities daily daily instances of turmoil and violent death and an increasing flood of disasters and dangers are symptomatic of the times. For instance, quote, there are many dangers upon the waters and more especially hereafter, end quote. The saints learned by revelation back on August 12th, 1831, following Elder W or William W. Phelps' daylight vision of the destroyer riding upon the face of the Missouri River. Quote, for I, the Lord, have decreed in mine anger many destructions upon the waters, yea, and especially upon these waters. Behold, I, the Lord, in the beginning blessed the waters, but in the last days, by the mouth of my servant John, I cursed the waters. Wherefore, the days will come that no flesh shall be safe upon the waters. And uh, that's basically all that he puts um, in Mormon doctrine. I use the scripture citation, citation index like I usually do uh, to see when certain verses uh, have been cited. Um, okay, so we got in general conference, this is uh, Elder Joseph L. Worthlin, second counselor in the presiding bishopric, 1943, April general conference. 
and it looks like my uh, highlights got all messed up. So bear with me for just a second. Let's click on this. It'll take it. Okay. I'll zoom in. Click on this again. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> interestingly, he's talking about uh, <coughs> the scourge. Um, he says, the question arises, what is meant by the Lord's scourge? Uh Quote, scourged pass over by night and by day, and the report thereof shall vex all people. As we observe the events that are occurring in the greatest war of all time, remember, World War II is happening at that time, uh, the courage spoken of by the Lord might well be squadrons of flying fortresses raining death and destruction upon people, cities, armies, battleship fleets, and merchant marine by day and by night. Think, if you will, of London, Coventry, Rotterdam, Stalingrad, and now Berlin. Surely the inhabitants of warring nations are sorely vexed by the passing of this scourge over them by day and by night. Again, I submit the question, from whence did Joseph Smith receive the information that such an event would take place? There's but one answer, his own, a revelation from the Lord. Consider section 61, verses 14, 15, and 16. Behold, I, the Lord, in the beginning blessed the waters, but in the last days, by the mouth of my servant John, I cursed the waters. Therefore, or sorry, wherefore, the days will come that no flesh shall be safe upon the waters. And it shall be said in the days to come that none is able to go up upon, up to the land of Zion upon the waters, uh, but he that is upright in heart. An examination of daily events upon the oceans of the earth might well indicate that the days are here when no flesh shall be safe upon the waters. Hundreds of thousands of tons of shipping have been sent to the bottom of the sea, involving the loss of thousands of lives. Again, the question comes to our minds, how is it, or how was it possible for Joseph Smith in 1831 to forecast a situation in the future wherein the waters would be unsafe for man? His answer is the only, his answer is the only one, revelation from God given to his servant. So I could go on and on about this. <clears throat> In fact, uh, I'm just now remembering that somebody sent me an email about <clears throat> basically one third of marine life um, having died. Essentially, uh, they've done like a study. I'll have I'll have to do that in another video. So I think that with this particular one, there's probably different ways that this is coming to pass, but. I think that this is one of them, uh, just the number of wars and, um, you know, because especially during World War II, you had the German U-boats that were a big threat. Uh, they were sinking boats. A lot of people died. Uh, for the United States, the war began when um, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. And we all know that was a big naval base and, you know, ships were sunk so uh, there's been a lot of naval warfare, but, you know, right now, as the climate is changing, um, and I do think, in my own opinion, I think it's the Earth preparing itself to become a terrestrial world. Um, I do think that the water is going to become more extreme. So not just naval warfare, but in this case, we're, we're talking about an extreme rogue wave, the largest ever recorded right and you might even say like the tsunamis that we've seen have been pretty horrific ki killing hundreds of thousands of people in indonesia um uh, in japan it wasn't in the hundreds of thousands but it caused a lot of damage uh back in uh 2011 so the waters are yeah they're getting crazy they're getting crazy um so yeah, well, that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.